The year is about 1909, and Robert A. Millikan gave us another clue to the structure of the atom in his oil drop experiment. So, a few years earlier, J.J. Thomson gave us the charge to mass ratio of the electron in his cathode ray tube experiment. And Millikan is building upon that work. He measured the charge of a single electron using this apparatus, and then using J.J. Thomson's ratio, he calculated the mass of a single electron. Here's how. So in this apparatus, there is an atomizer, and it produces a mist of tiny oil droplets. And some of them fall through a pinhole in this metal plate. Now looking through this eyepiece, Millikan was measuring very carefully the rate at which they fell, mostly due to gravity. Then he bombarded the inside of this chamber with x-rays. And those x-rays caused some of the particles of air in the chamber to become charged or ionized. And when those charged air particles collided with the oil droplets, some of those oil droplets also became charged. Then he applied an electric field between these two metal plates. And based on the intensity of that electric field, the rate at which these oil droplets were falling could slow or even reverse. So by carefully adjusting the strength of this electric field, and by measuring the rate at which these oil droplets were falling, he was able to get the data that he needed to determine the charge on individual tiny drops of oil. Let's look at some of his data. These are actual charges on specific, extremely tiny droplets of oil. Do you notice anything about these numbers? Pause if you want to take a moment to see a pattern. But each and every one of these numbers is a whole number multiple of the smallest charge on this list. That smallest charge is 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. So no matter how many measurements he took, that was the smallest charge and everything else was a whole number multiple. So Millikan concluded that that value must be a fundamental charge. He concluded that it must be the charge on a single electron. If one specific measurement was three times higher, then that oil droplet must have three electrons. We're, we'd be measuring a group of three electrons, not just one. So to find the mass of an electron, we take the charge that Millikan found, 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs, and we divide it by the charge to mass ratio that J.J. Thompson found, 1.759 times 10 to the 11th coulombs per kilograms. And we calculate that a mass of one electron equals 9.107 times 10 to the minus 31st kilograms. That is tiny. So what does this mean for the structure of the atom? Well, the two competing models that we had before this actually still hold up. So we have Hantaro Nagaoka's Saturn-like atom, in which we have a positively charged sphere surrounded by a halo of negatively charged electrons. And we have J.J. Thomson's plum pudding model, in which negatively charged electrons are embedded in positively charged pudding, like raisins in a disgusting cake. But you can probably say it with me at this point in the series. These aren't quite right. Next up, we need some help from Ernest Rutherford for our next piece of the puzzle. Thanks for watching Chemistry in a Nutshell. If you feel that I've earned it, please like this video and subscribe to my channel.